seems like he de-transformed into who he actually was. And that's that great moment that every comedian wants to get to. You know, it took me a long time to get to it where the person that you are off stage is who you are on stage. Look at that, New Yorker. For 50 years, George Carlin was one of this nation's leading comedians. He died in 2008, but clips from his performances are now going viral. His comments as relevant today as they were when he first said them. Carlin once said he liked to find where we draw the line, then take his audience over it and make them glad they joined him. He was, at heart, an entertainer, but he also wanted to make us think. The two-part documentary, George Carlin's American Dream, debuts tomorrow night on HBO. I sat down with Carlin's daughter, Kelly, and the documentary's co-director, Judd Apatow, and began by asking them what Carlin means to comedy today. Well, I think, you know, he's on our Mount Rushmore. He, uh, he was a critical thinker. He liked to break things down. I think he uh, distrusted uh, power and uh, was looking out for the BS everywhere. And then so many comedians learned how to do comedy from listening to his albums and, and watching him. Well, that's the whole meaning of life, isn't it? Trying to find a place for your stuff. <laughs> that's all your house is. Your house is just a place for your stuff. If you didn't have so much goddamn stuff, you wouldn't need a house. <laughs> you could just walk around all the time. That's all your house is? It's a pile of stuff with a cover on it. Like he had nine lives. He had ups, he had downs, but his fan base only grew and his art changed. Is it because he was always living his truth? Yeah, absolutely. You know, as the culture changes, he was an observer. That was his thing. He was a news junkie. News was on 24-7. He was watching the culture, watching what was going on. What's the conversation? What are we being pushed up against? What, what are we pushing up against? And so he followed that. And I think people who don't evolve throughout their career as an artist or a comedian, they're stuck in what works. Oh, this works. This is great. I'm just going to do this forever. And then they do, but their audience gets older and older and dwindles with them. In my dad's audience, he always had everyone from nine-year-olds to 90-year-olds. So he had this cross-generational thing going on right away. And he was always the guy who was saying something on stage that you would sit there and go, oh, wow, I've never even thought of it that way before or even thought of that thing. So he was always pulling us forward in some way as thinkers. Then over time, as his comedy grew darker, and it did, was he trying to be funny or was it more of a, a social commentary, even a call to action? I think in his, in his concerts he would structure it where he would you know, do silly routines and a lot of times he would land on a big rant. And some of them are less funny. Uh, but they're kind of exciting to watch because he's really laying out his philosophy. We're so self-important, so self-important. Everybody's going to save something now. Save the trees, save the bees, save the whales, save those snails. <laughs> and the greatest arrogance of all, save the planet. What? Are these people kidding me? <laughs> save the planet? We don't even know how to take care of ourselves yet. I think the darkness came from the fact that we weren't ready to hear it. He was seeing it. He saw where this, this road was going of America. He saw the greed. He knows where it ends up. And he had to share that. And he always tried to make it funny in some way. But we as the audience were like, I don't know if I'm ready to hear this yet. And that's where the darkness came. But wasn't that part of his comedy where he said, people don't want the truth. They don't want reality. Yeah. I, well, I think, I, I look at his material and, you know, he said, you know, when you scratch a cynic, you find a disappointed idealist. And I think he looked at America and the world as a place where we've been given this incredible opportunity to take care of this beautiful world and that people were very short-sighted and you know he, he has a, a great routine where he talks about the, the earth is so gorgeous but we decided to build malls and just walk around in them. <laughs> he just saw us as ridiculous and hurtful to the planet and each other. Yeah. Then how jarring was it to put this project together and when you think about all these issues he was warning us about and now we're real-time living some pretty terrible consequences. What was that like for you to watch that and, and process that with where we are? Well, I think that's why he's popular now. Because when these videos go around of, of his bits, 
there aren't videos of other comedians. It's not like a lot of George Carlin videos going around and four other people. It's just him. I mean, he has the defining bit about abortion, about money in politics, about the environment, about education. And it, it's pretty wild that people said he's so dark. And now you look at it and you go, maybe it wasn't dark enough. There's a reason education sucks, and it's the same reason that it will never, ever, ever be fixed. It's never going to get any better. Don't look for it. Be happy with what you got. Because the owners of this country don't want that. I'm talking about the real owners now. The real owners, the big, wealthy business interests that control things and make all the important decisions. Forget the politicians. The politicians are put there to give you the idea that you have freedom of choice. You don't. He said... You know, you only have the rights that they want you to think you have. And now people are losing their rights. And he also said, we elected these people. It's our fault. It's all our fault. We, we are uneducated, we're not involved, and we're not making the change. Then is what you want people to take away from this film is that George Carlin wasn't on anybody's team. He wasn't on the right. He wasn't on the left. He was just on the individuals. Well, the, the movie ends, you know, it, it goes to black, and then you hear what he would say at the end of his show, and he would, he would always say, take care of yourself, take care of each other. And I think that was the point of all of it. He was a man who cared for those around him, and that's what was breaking his heart so much, was that we stopped, or maybe we were never able to in this country, to really care for everybody equally. And I think that's all he ever wanted was for everyone to have a shot, to be seen as um, a human being who deserves every shot that everyone else gets. Amen to that. Many thanks to Kelly Carlin and Judge Apatow. The new documentary, George Carlin's American Dream, premieres tomorrow night on HBO.